Intel and Qualcomm both think that they can beat Apple with their new amazing Apple Silicon chips. And today we're gonna talk about not only what has recently changed, but also if this is actually a possibility, the sneaky things that these companies are doing to try to make it happen, when they will catch up and defeat Apple, and if I think that's a possibility, and why Apple is so upset about this. Let's start out with Intel because this is the less shady part. Uh, starting out, Apple had a deal with Intel for years using their chips, but Apple grew just tired and annoyed about how slow Intel was growing and how much delays they had. So they finally dropped them and switched over to their own chips, which dominated Intel. Now, Intel knew for years that Apple was developing those chips and that it was gonna happen, but what they didn't expect is for Apple's first chips to be this good. At first, they just mocked Apple for being a lifestyle brand, and then when these chips came out, they started just making fun of them and putting this crazy ad campaign going so far as actually hiring the I'm a Mac guy to switch over to Intel side and say that Macs aren't real computers, which just blows my mind. I don't know how much money they paid him. And after that, 9to5Mac reported that Intel, just like Qualcomm, said that they could beat Apple, but that literally lasted one day because Intel's own CEO admitted the next day that Macs are pretty good and that the Apple Silicon chips are ahead of Intel's own designs. But either way, they are planning to win back Apple's business, just showing that Intel was definitely relying on Apple. So how is Intel going to make this happen? Well, Meteor Lake. Now, at first, they thought that it's gonna take them until 2025 to reach that goal, but they've been making a lot of shifts now. The latest one that just came out because we've had earnings, we've had uh, company calls with a lot more explanation going on. Now, we know that Intel's 12th generation chips merely made a massive improvement in performance, and they actually did beat out Apple's own chips in a number of ways, even though they used way more power. So that just shows us how good competition is, not only from Apple, but also from AMD. But this chip, the Meteor Lake that was announced, this is the big deal. But now Intel basically just admitted that this is not enough because at first when they announced it, they were talking about making this chip on a seven nanometer node, designing it by themselves. But it turns out that we just had an insider leak some information about this chip saying that it will actually be made by TSMC using the same five nanometer node that Apple uses for their M1 chips. So Intel is realizing how far ahead Apple is and that they need to step it up and go further faster to be able to compete. Now, do I think that Intel can compete with Apple? I think after this change, it's gonna really help them. And this new style of design of chip that they're shifting to, I think because of Apple, has a lot more flexibility. We have a tiled architecture, just like Apple's does. We have hybrid cores that are focusing on low power, better graphics, just like Apple has. So seeing what they did with the 12th gen shifts, that performance, and now this improvement with this latest jump that was announced, I think they actually have a pretty good chance. But this is where we need to switch to Qualcomm, Apple's competitor in the mobile space. Qualcomm said that they can beat Apple's M1 chips. Thanks to, what do you think? How are they gonna do that? Ex-Apple engineers. Now, this is crazy. We know that in the past, Qualcomm had a really hard time competing with Apple. Going as far as this latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip getting a ton of hype, but when it came down to it, it was so far behind Apple's A15 chips, which themselves were a bad upgrade from the A14. We have an extra graphics score, which is the main difference, but Apple kind of took a year off to focus on the next generation because they were so far ahead. And if you look back years before that, where we had the Microsoft tablets come out with chips that are made by Qualcomm to rival Apple, I mean, they were terrible compared to the iPads. To make this happen, they have Gerard Williams, which was the former lead of the A-series chips. And Apple is so upset that they actually sued him because he was poaching other key engineers from Apple. 
Now, three of these guys formed their own company that said that they are competing with Intel and AMD, not with Apple, because obviously they left Apple. But the kicker is that Qualcomm straight up bought their company for $1.4 billion. Now, isn't that just the best way to get Apple engineers without having a lot of issues, having them leave and have a new company? I don't know if that's exactly what hired, but this is crazy. Now, that is not the only issue that Apple is facing. Just recently, this came out where Apple is accusing another group of engineers of stealing chip secrets, and they are suing a startup called Rivos for poaching Apple's engineers that have access to secret company information. So when do you think that Qualcomm is going to be competitive and they will beat out Apple? Well, they are saying by late 2023, their M1 rival will be available. Now, this is just crazy because if you guys have been following along, you guys know that Apple is set to release the M2 chip very soon. And by the time that this chip is going to be released, and if there's no extra delays with, and with chip shortage, you guys know how this is, Apple could be on their way or maybe even have released the M3 series that they are, are actually working on right now. And based on the information that we already know about the M2 chip, it's gonna be much more powerful than the M1. Mark Gurman, one of Apple's most accurate leakers, he's told us what chips are coming out. We already have the M1 Pro and Max with a 30 two graphics scores as he predicted and we also have the m2 which is going to have nine and ten graphics cores now not only that it will be based on the a16 so we have advantages of using a newer node and we already know how much faster that node is because tsmc gave us all that information that node change alone gives us an 11 percent boost up to over 1900 single core score an 8,278 multi-core score. But if Apple uses ARM V9, which we think they will because that's where everything is headed, then our performance boost will be even greater, up to 9,322. So how is Qualcomm gonna be comparing to that? And that's only on the CPU side. On the graphic side, based on the second scenario, we're looking at up to 31,700 graphics score for the M2, which is a huge leap, something that's gonna be very hard to beat. So personally, I have to say that I think that these companies, even after poaching and changing up their plans and using Apple's five nanometer tech with TSMC, based on TSMC's fab, they are still going to struggle to keep up with Apple. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. We're excited though to have extra competition. That helps everybody, it's gonna help push Apple Apple as well so competition is great for everybody but we see that these guys are trying but they're still years behind so thank you guys for watching click that circle above to subscribe check out one of those great videos right over there this has been max and i'll see you in the next video